Welcome to the Open3D Engine YouTube channel and back to our Pong series. I'm Alex Demarjan, a technical trainer with the AWS Game Tech team. In the previous tutorial, we created the controls that guided the movement of our paddles. In this tutorial, we have a special guest instructor, Chris Galvan, who will provide us with an introduction to script events and how they can be used to create a variation of the simple state machine. Let's begin. Hi, Chris. Hey, Alex. Thanks for the intro. Like you said, my name is Chris Galvan. I'm a senior software engineer with AWS. I've been working here for just over five years, mostly on the O3D editor and tools. But enough about me, let's start the tutorial. Recall from the previous tutorial, we disabled the start menu from appearing when we ran our project. So let's begin by enabling our start menu and then explore how we can control its functionality through the creation of a simple state machine. In the entity outliner, select the start menu game object. Then, on the right side of the screen, in the UI Canvas Asset Ref Game Object component, toggle on Load Automatically. Now, when we run our game, our menu is now re-enabled. I would like to create a simple state machine to keep track of the various game states. You can think of a state machine as a way of managing and switching between the various states based on input. In respect to our Pong game, when I press the Enter key on my keyboard, I would like to enter a state called Start Game. Since O3DE is designed around event-driven paradigms, a great tool we can use to create our state machine are script events. In our asset editor, select File, New, then Script Events. Give our script event a name that fits its purpose, like Simple State Machine. Below it, make sure that the category field contains the words Script Events. Back in the Script Canvas Editor's node palette, you can see that our Simple State Machine event is now a nested subcategory of our script event. Next, click the plus icon to add an event. When creating events, you want to define them as though you would define any function in a programming language. Name our event game state. Next, click the plus sign in the parameter section. Then expand the zero and name subsections and name our parameter state. Then choose string as the data type of the parameter. The events you create here are available for dragging and dropping from the script canvas node palette. If this is a bit confusing now, don't worry. We'll be putting all this in action in just a moment. Back in Script Canvas, on the left-hand side of the screen, find your node palette. Locate the script events section nested within its subsection, Simple State Machine. Find your game state event. Drag it onto the canvas, and once you release the mouse, a pop-up menu will appear to choose either the send or receive for your event. In our case, let's select Send Game State. Once the Enter key is pressed, we would like to send out a message to our entire application that we can officially start our game. We will call this state Game Started. For the state parameter on your node, enter Game Started. Next, drag it onto the white line connector between our input handler and game state. This will automatically connect the input and output pins and shift the other nodes apart, making room for our game state node. Make sure to save your script. Next, let's open your paddle movement script. Since we will be waiting to receive a message that our game is currently in a game started state, and we want our paddles to move only if the enter key is pressed, we will no longer need the on entity activated node. So let's select and delete it. Now we want to listen for or receive a message that our game is currently in the game started state. This is easy to do. Once again, from our node palette, drag and drop our game state node onto your script canvas area. This time, select receive game state from the pop-up menu. Let's position our new node into the paddle movement group. Excellent. Next, we need to check whether or not we are in the game started state. A great note for this is the equal to node. In our node palette, expand both the math section as well as its subsection comparisons. Here you will find the equal to node. Drag and drop it off to our script canvas. Let's position it between our simple state machine and input handler nodes. Connect the out pin from the simple state machine node to the in pin of our equal to node. Then we want to pass in the state we received from our enter to game start game script. To do this, connect the value pin from simple state machine node to the value a pin of our equal to node. The value we would like to check for is whether or not we received the game started text. For value B, enter game started. Make sure that the text is identical. It is case sensitive and will not work otherwise. Next, arrange your nodes so they are better aligned and connect the value true pin from our equal to node into our input handler's connect event node. If the values of A and B in our equal to node do not match, the input handler will not be called, stopping any paddle movement in our game. Save your script. Back in our editor, let's run our game. Notice that when I try to move the paddles with any of my keys, they do not move. And once I press enter, I am now able to move my paddles. In this video, Chris Galvan gave us an introductory look at script events and how they can be used to control our paddles and menu. In the next tutorial, we'll begin to script our ball's movement and explore concepts like physics materials and rigid bodies. 
One last point before we go. O3D is an open source engine, and the O3D community is constantly making important updates. So check back often for more O3D related content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.